Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just uh, concerned about this complying with the law. Yes. <laughs> now, somebody was saying some crap about me, how I'm crazy. Yes. <laughs> and there's not Nazis in control of the Sheriff's Department. <laughs> well, let's see. Yes. This Arizona judgment, yes, says that um, mm -hmm. a party's ignorance, yes, of the law is not an excuse for failing to comply with it. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, you said she was a pro se litigant, mm -hmm. but it looks to me that there's probably 40 to 50 different, uh, different, yes, mm -hmm. failures to comply with the law. Yes. Uh, the ignorance of my wife was not mm -hmm. an excuse to fail to comply with the law. Well, she motioned for default dissolution of marriage. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you denied the default dissolution of marriage. And after that point, you never required her to have proof of service. Yes. And then you issued a dissolution of marriage. Mm hmm without any requirement of me receiving any documentation. Yeah. And then when you expected me, yes, to do what I should have done, yes. Exactly what do you do when you've never been through a dissolution of marriage? Well, Brent, mm -hmm. why are you practicing law? Mm -hmm. See, um, I, I, went, I went online, yes. Mm-hmm. Very few individuals, excuse me, mm -hmm, in the state of Washington actually are disbarred. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this idea that you could say that my wife was ignorant of the law. Yes. And she had an excuse for not making sure that I got notice of court hearings. Yes. Because you just couldn't make her do it because of the traumatic experience that she had on Guam. Mm -hmm. I would say that I'm suing the state. Poop. Mm hmm now, self-represented litigant, yes. The ABA's commentary oh, to the Model Ethics Rule 4.3 shown above notes that, that in a situation mm -hmm, where any attorney, a lawyer, uh -huh, must deal with an unrepresented person whose interests may be adverse to the interests of the lawyer's client, yes, which is almost always the case in a family law case, <laughs> the possibility that the lawyer will compromise Oh, the unrepresented person's interest. Now, you want me to explain how this applies to me when I never had an attorney? Yes, it applies because if you never give me any documentation, it makes it extremely difficult to convince an attorney to represent me when oh, I'm a volunteer at Kingsway Four Square Church. Yes, doing the cleaning, the vacuuming, and doing the custodial work right now. Now, uh, there is a great amount of conflict of interest, yes, to have the state representing my wife, yes, when the state knows about forgery, oh, uh -huh. when the state knows that my wife was not uh, at the court hearing, yes, when the state knows that I was not in Swim Washington, pooch. see, my wife has had the state pay for quite a few attorneys representing her, yes. Yes, she has. And each and every time that the state paid, mm -hmm, my public defender said I was crazy. Pooch. Did you pay Bruce Hanafi right now? Were you playing marbles, Bruce? Did somebody in the family decide to say I was crazy? Yes. For knowing yes, that I was never in Squim, Washington on this day. Yeah. And then Brett, Brett Roberts said, well, he's obviously crazy. Yes. He put his driver's license and social security number online. Yes. As well as the personal identification of my own sons. Yes. That must be crazy. Mm. The problem is they're in the wrong grades. Mm. Now, uh, this idea of me being the unrepresented person. Mm. I informed Judge Landis. Yes, my wife didn't sign the protection order. <laughs> Judge Landis allows for Jack Range. Yes, and the prosecuting attorney's office in Jefferson County <laughs> to require me to have a 1077 oh, before admitting any guilt or not guilty plea pooch, for, for making sure, yes, that no one in law enforcement 
actually asked me where was I at on June 16th of 2017. Yes. Now, the use of the 1077 without any evidence. Yes. Without me being able to call any witness in my behalf. Yes. Without me being able to show the videos to my public defender. Oh. And have him believe me, yes, <laughs> when I was making videos in front of the Masonic Temple on that day. <laughs> See, it looks to me, yes, that this Nazi ideal that I described in today's email, <laughs> I'm going to go back to it in a few minutes. <laughs> because it looks right now that the same shit that the Nazis did, that's what you're doing in this state. <laughs> Now, somebody said that I was crazy for comparing the state of Washington to Hitler. <laughs> but when you really think about it, yes. Mm -hmm. You say, yes, I was someplace that I was not. Yes. Committing crimes that I wasn't committing. Yes. While at the same time emailing. Yes. The actual document. Well, there is a very, very close resemblance. <laughs> It looks like, right, that this state has been Nazified. <laughs> now, let's look at today's email, <laughs> because there was a sheriff right now that said, no, it's not possible. We couldn't have been doing what the SS Reich had been doing during the time of Hitler. <laughs> but the way I see it, that's what you've been doing, Pooh. See, you would not, yes, ask me, where were you at on June 16th of 2017? You didn't ask me, do I have any evidence to prove my innocence? <laughs> what you did was you obligated a 1077 before asking me what I was doing. <laughs> and then that, that prosecuting attorney's office, yes, had decided that I was going to a mental institution <laughs> where you were going to administer psychotropic medication against my will. <laughs> Now, when you think about it, mm -hmm, this incarcerating of individuals, ooch, 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 where you just say, well, you just made up a crime. It does look like, no, it does. It looks just like what you're doing. 